typically what will happen is they'll go to a party, they'll be there for a little while, and people will start to smoke up. And when you're put into a situation like that, what you want to do is you want to get out of there as quick as possible. Because eventually, okay, my friend right here, he goes to a school, and just recently, by an upper, uh, upperclassman, he was told that over time, the peer pressure kicks in, and you just have no choice, but you just, you gotta smoke pot, or do something like that, just to take off pressure. And uh, you, you shouldn't do that, it's just really bad for you. So the best thing to do is just avoid the parties. Well, at least the bad ones. Weekend parties are a fact of life among high school youth today. Now getting away from parents, distressing, and just looking for a good time are the main purposes for partying. When polled, about one-third of the teens said that they don't attend parties. However, two-thirds of the young people said that they attend parties often, many of them every weekend. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Adriana. And, and this, this is, is Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Now, most teenage Christians might be surprised to learn that Jesus' first miracle took place at a party. You know, not that this wedding party at Cana was anything like the parties which most teens attend nowadays. Do you attend parties? What kind of parties do you really enjoy? Does your faith impact on whether or not you attend a party or whether you participate in unchristian behavior? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Parties. Now, Jessie will share with us a few of her party experiences and how she doesn't let a party compromise her Christian values. Our video today is A New Way to Be Human by Switchfoot. Now, let's see what kinds of parties some of the teens we met on the street have to do, too. I just go to parties just for fun, to dance, to hang out with my friends. That's about it. I don't do any drugs when I'm there. I know people who do get drunk because they like to. When they get drunk and wasted and they're throwing up, I'm there. Well, when you go to parties, there's a lot of liquor. Everyone's under influence, drunk. Then they want to go out driving. Things happen. Things are said. Um, people, guys, sometimes take advantage of girls and then they regret it. They like to stay up all night and drink and do whatever. That's not my cup of tea. I got better things to do. Just parties where there's a lot of people having a good time and, you know, lots of drinking and <laughs> partying. You know what I mean. High school parties are pretty crazy when it gets right down to it. Some of them I've been to, they've had alcohol and people just going upstairs and doing whatever. But high school parties get really crazy sometimes. And some of them are okay, but you don't need alcohol to have a good time. Nothing too like extreme, not like that many drugs or anything. Nothing bad, just like fun. I wouldn't know because I've never been to a party. <laughs> if you have self-control, and if you know what to do and what not to do if you're at a party, then it's okay. Because, like, I have self-control a lot, and I don't do drugs or anything, so. That's really important, having self-control. It really is. No, because if you don't, then what's going to happen? That's true. That's so true. <laughs> How about we um, talk to our studio guests today? Joining us are Beth, Courtney, Carrie and Kyle. What kind of experiences have you had in parties? Well, actually, I've only been to one where I was really worried before the party about what was going to be going on. I spent so much time worrying before the party that when I got there, things really didn't seem so bad. And there's always a way out. You can call your parents to leave early or, or um, somebody else who's close to you. So it's, it isn't, there are ways out and it isn't as bad at times as people make it out to seem. Was there alcohol there? There, there were a lot of people uh, smoking some illegal substances. <laughs> <laughs> Marijuana? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Courtney? Yeah, like, I'm in high school now, and it's like, it seems like as each year goes by, like freshman, junior, sophomore, whatever, like the parties get worse and worse and worse. So it's like, if I went to a party at a friend's house freshman year, it wouldn't be that bad, but like now, because um, our parents are leaving us home alone. Like, the parties are insane. You have people like upstairs doing whatever, like you said on the video, right. and like smoking weed. And then like if I stay over and help clean up, the house is just like trashed afterwards. Yeah, hopefully most of the time it's innocent fun and nothing too drastic. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I haven't actually experienced anything, but I've definitely heard about things that have happened. Like the cops would have to come. Like, 
neighbors complaining and that sort of stuff? Like, I really like my parents, like, uh, I don't know. I guess you could call them maybe like a little controlling because like <laughs> I'm invited to like a lot of like house parties and stuff. And like, I don't know, I always say like I always want to go, but then like later I always find out about, oh my gosh, that's what happened. And like it gets crazy and drinking and all that stuff. So like at like the end, I always like, I don't regret it. Yeah, my mom, she used to be controlling, like, when I went to parties, she wanted to know, like, where I was going, who I was going with, like, all the information. But as I got older, she learned that she could trust me and that she didn't have to, like, worry about what I would do. Like, I'm not going to go there and smoke weed and get drunk and then do something that I love to regret. Because mm -hmm. that's just not something I would do. Because you basically lose control of decisions. Yeah, because, yeah, like, when you're high or something, you're just gone. Totally. Mm -hmm. This is true. Well, you know what? Jessie shared with us a couple of her, uh, I guess you could say, memorable party experiences. Let's check it out. Um, a few of my girlfriends, um, you know, they'll go to parties, they'll drink, they'll meet some guy, you know, hook up for the night and then never see him again. And, you know, they'll come to me and be like, oh, well, I really like this guy or, you know, I'm really like falling for him. And I think it's sad because, you know, like there's, you know, in a week when he doesn't call, when, you know, they didn't even exchange phone numbers or anything. like they're going to be really upset and it makes me sad because they're they always like they continue to do it and you know they think that it's going to be different each time but it's not and you know so they're just getting their hearts broken over and over again so you just got to be aware and you know like don't get yourself into things that you might not be able to get out of like for instance if you know you have a close friend of the opposite sex and they've been drinking alcohol and you're just talking to them they might think that you're flirting with them and you know, that might go the wrong way and put you in a place that you're not comfortable with. So there's a certain situation where um, I took an active role in um, trying to stop my friend from taking drugs. Um, he had brought marijuana to a party that I was at and, um, you know, he, he pulled it out and he was showing everybody and I walked over and I said, you know, like, what is that? Like, what are you doing with it here? And, He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go smoke up later. And I was like, no, you're not. And, you know, and he was already, um, I guess, a little bit, you know, out there. Like he had had one, a joint before or whatever. He was probably drinking too. Um, and so I just said, no, you're not. And I took it from his hand. And he was, because he was so, like, laid back, you know, um, I was able to do that, you know, thank God, because otherwise something would have happened. And I just took it and I flushed it down the toilet. And, I was like, this isn't going to happen. So, you know, and of course he was like, oh, mad and stuff, but didn't really affect him that much just because he had been smoking before and he was just so, like, out of it. And we're still friends. I mean, the next day, you know, he was just kind of like, he was a little mad. Um, more of the fact that, you know, he was just like, that cost me $10 rather than, you know, oh, that was what I was going to do that night. You know, and I, I even offered, I said, you know, I'll give you the $10 if, if it really means that much to you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was just, he kind of didn't miss it that much, so I knew that he really didn't need it. Wow, you know, that, that was a really uh, uh, brave, courageous thing that Jesse did. Um, now, we, we really don't recommend that you guys try that in all situations <laughs> because, you know, people that are smoking and, and drinking can be sometimes dangerous. be, be very dangerous violent. and it could be dangerous to you guys, so, you know. It has a really good example on how someone could really take a stand for what they feel is right, you know? Even though it's the unpopular thing to do, and she really stood up for what she believed in. Now, how about you guys? Have you ever felt uncomfortable at a party so much so that you either had to leave or speak up about it? Mm, not really. <laughs> no, not real, really for me, because, like, if I know someone's going to have a party and I like have a gut feeling that I'm going to be uncomfortable there, I won't go, period. Like, I won't put myself in that kind of predicament in the first place. I haven't been in a situation where I've had felt so uncomfortable I've had to leave either because if you have friends who have the same beliefs as you and the same morals as you and they don't drink and they don't do drugs either, it's harder to get in a situation where they're around. So if the mm -hmm. people you hang out with don't do that, it's easier for you to avoid it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. You know, Many youth, though, really don't consider a party worth attending unless they know that there is going to be alcohol served. So now, it's kind of difficult. That's really sad, though. Right <laughs> <laughs> now, besides it being um, illegal you know, for a young person to drink, um, the Christian teen has to look at their moral responsibility here. You know, not just a you know, 
teenager going out and drinking. It's more of a, mm -hmm. a faith thing that you have to Yeah, yeah I, I think it's really sad that the only way you can go to a party and have fun is if you're like getting drunk or high or something. I mean, that has to say something about you that you can't enjoy your life without somebody sticking something in your body. Yeah, okay. it is. There are lots of other ways to have fun. If you're with your friends and they truly are your friends, you can have fun. When it, just you guys hanging out, music, you don't need mm -hmm. all that other stuff. You don't, you don't. What is, what do you think your idea, what is your idea of a good party? Can you have a good party without drugs and alcohol like you just said? How about you guys? Yeah, I think like just getting a bunch of your friends together and maybe listening to some music and dancing around. And I think that would be a very good party even without the alcohol and drugs and stuff. Like what Carrie said about like having friends, like getting a group of friends over and having like some music and stuff, but like have good food too. <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely yeah. gotta have food. Yeah, you food. gotta have food. <laughs> food is great. <laughs> like, not just like cheap pizza and corn yeah, chips seriously. or stuff. Have you gotta have like, stuff. Like, have like a buffet buffalo, or something. Like buffalo wings or something. Oh, buffalo, buffalo wings. wings you can't go out with, without the buffalo wings. Yeah. <laughs> but like a good part, like a really good DJ that plays like all the new music That's and like, you can dance around and like. Get in the group yeah, you just, <laughs> you're having fun or something. Yeah, it's like as long as you don't feel pressured at the party and just having fun. That's my like my best kind of party I can go to. Yeah, like even like where I can like just because if I don't like a song, I dance really stupid to it on purpose. And if <laughs> I can do yeah, I'll do something like that. And <laughs> if I can do that and like not have people looking at me like I'm insane, mm -hmm. or even if they do, I really don't care. But if I can do that, you're at a party. You're having yeah, a good exactly. Time, you know? Yeah, if I can do that, then it's cool. That's cool. How about we go? to our interview with Jesse <laughs> and see what advice she can give to teens who um, might like to attend parties. I think that a lot of kids um, find themselves in situations like this, like they go to parties and they're drinking and stuff just because they want to relieve the stress and they have so much going on in their lives and, you know, I mean, every, every teen does, it's, you know, nobody's an exception, but, um, you know, and, and they think that alcohol and drugs is maybe the only way that they can you know, get rid of their problems and feel like somewhat happy with themselves. There's plenty of things you can do to relieve stress. Just go like take a walk in the park. A lot of people that I know go for runs when they're really mad, you know, or, or stressed out about something. And you know, just sit down with your best friend and talk about it. And you know, I mean, you can, or just go and have a, you know, good, clean, fun party. You know, it doesn't have to be alcohol or anything to calm you down. I know that um, some kids might say that, oh, well, you know, like the monks invented beer or, you know, Jesus drank wine, like Jesus created wine, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, and there is like a time and a place for alcohol to be enjoyed. And it's definitely, you know, not a, not a bad thing. But um, like I was saying before, that temperance is one of the cardinal virtues. And it says, you know, you, you can't overindulge, you can't, you know, um, overdo things like that because they're just bad for you and it's, you know, it's destroying yourself and others around you. So, um, you know, kids might say, oh, well, Jesus did this, Jesus did that. Yeah, Jesus drank, but he didn't get drunk, you know. He didn't um, go to parties and, you know, he wasn't involved in any, like, drugs or anything like that. Um, so you just got to realize that, you know, like, alcohol isn't a bad thing, but when you're young and when you overuse it, and, um, you know, it's, it's not only is it illegal, but um, it's really harmful to you as a youth. Sometimes, you know, if you refuse alcohol or whatever at a party, or if you just don't go to the parties that your friends are having, you kind of feel, like, alone sometimes. Um, but, you know, you think you're in the minority, but really when you look around you, there's tons of people that don't go to parties. And, you know, people might hear that from certain you know, people like talking about you that, oh, she didn't go to this party or she's Christian, you know, she doesn't do that stuff. Then, you know, you're going to find people coming up to you and saying, oh, you know, like, I'm like this too, you know. I don't like those parties and, you know, can we hang out sometimes? Prayer is always really important and, you know, you just got to ask God and say, you know, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And you just got to um, trust that he'll put you in the right situations. I mean, if you do end up at a party, maybe you'll be there either to stop people from drinking or stop people from driving home, you know, be the designated driver or something. Just, you know, go to parties and maybe just try to, you know, cut down on what's going on there. Or maybe God will just say, you don't belong there, and you'll know that, you'll know it. I think I definitely see her point about um, drinking 
not being a bad thing, but not to overuse it. You have to be responsible. Just like you seriously do, and especially when you're young, it's so much harder to become. It's so much easier to be addicted to things, you know, especially with the peer pressure and everything that's going on. I mean, I have friends that they go to a party, they drink all the time, and I'm like, you know what? You're made. God created you for the person that you are. If you need beer or if you need drugs to make yourself something that you're not, you know, then you really need to look inside and discover yourself because you don't need that. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need that all the time to make a good, to have fun and all this other stuff. You know, especially so when it becomes a problem and drinking and driving. I've yeah. had to do that so many times, take the keys away from friends and it's a really hard thing to do because it's a problem that they have. You know. no, luckily, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. I, I was going to say, luckily for me, like my friends, like the people I hang with, they're not really drinkers. So mm -hmm. if we go to a party, I don't have to worry about having to take um, the keys away from them or like having to like hold, their, hold their head when they're like yeah. puking in the toilet or something. Even if they're not your friends, I mean, people you don't know, you know, they'll get mad or something and they'll walk away and you're like, wait, yo, everyone's drunk and I'm not <laughs> drinking. So you, know, you have to go and they're getting ready to get in the car and you know, it's a struggle. If you give me your keys. Yeah. A lot of the times, a lot of the parties, um, they take your they take your keys before you actually oh, start yeah. drinking. Really? Yeah. So you know, so then my friend's graduation parties, a, mom did that. <laughs> right. So you have she a goes, clear okay. mind, and you know you're not fighting about it later. You know. Mm -hmm. So now, what um, advice or ideas do you guys have? Um, I would just say to people that like God has so much talents and gifts for you. It's like when you drink or you take drugs at a party, it's almost like an insult to him. It's mm -hmm. like you're wasting what he's given to you. That is, I couldn't have That's said that. That's really myself. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay. also important to remember that you always have a way out. Like I said before, if you're at a party and you feel uncomfortable, don't think you have to stay and wait till it's supposed to end to leave. If you can drive, just walk out and leave. Or if, you, if somebody drove you there, but they're not ready to leave yet, call your parents. You always have a way out. You don't have to stay around if you feel uncomfortable. And people actually look up to you, too, when you don't drink. You know, they're yeah. like, oh, well, she doesn't drink. You know, that's cool. It's all right. You know, that's yeah. good. But it's like, um, if you go to, if you, someone invites you to a party, and you know that they have a rep reputation for having really wild, wild parties, then maybe you shouldn't go if you're, like, you don't think that you mm -hmm. could, like, be yourself in that kind of situation. You can stand up for what you believe in. Yeah, definitely go to parties where you're, you know your friends with people. Yeah. And especially if when you go to a party and you really don't know people, you have to watch out for a lot of things. I mean, you have to look out for, you know, people. I mean, if, even if you're drinking, like, a soda, mm -hmm. don't leave it alone. Because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's the... Uh, Roofies, Rohypno, you know, that, and XC. it's just the date rape drug, you know, it's, it's just, yeah. Can't trust anybody. No, yeah. you can't. Not at all. So. You like, say, I go to clubs sometimes, and if, like, I go, and I buy a bottle of water while I'm there, I always like, keep it in my hand, or keep mm -hmm. it somewhere where I can always have an eye on it, just so no one will slip something in my drink, and I'll end up in the hospital or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how does your faith play a role, you know, in, your, in the decisions uh, about your behavior that you, have what a party. You said last I know. I know you had you had mentioned your. I mean, how your faith helped you. But how about you guys? You know. Yeah, I think it would. De I think God would definitely um, help you to resist the temptation of drinking too much, and uh, give you the wisdom to know whether or not you should leave, or if you should stay, or if you should help somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think also if you're at the party and you feel like everyone there is going to pressure you or make fun of you if you don't do what everyone else is doing, know that you're always going to have one person to back you up, and that is God and Jesus. And if you don't want to do it, then you'll have them inside of you to help you. Right. Yeah. She basically said what I was going <laughs> to say. So. I mean, I know a lot of my friends, I know they drink because maybe they're unhappy and they think, you know, it's a way to get away and mm -hmm. certain things like that. But um. Really, it's just they should be happy f with themselves and look and see without the drinking what's wrong and try to solve their problems like that, not by drinking. Yeah. I think it's also saying a new way to be human. You don't have to do what everyone else does. Exactly. You don't have to be like everyone else. You be the one to do the new thing right. and go out and show what's right. And you're the only one that can live your life. Yeah. Right. Nobody exactly. else is going to live your life for you. And a lot of people tell me, yeah, but you only live once, you know, so why not drink and have a good time? Well, you know what? If you're going to live once, just make the best of it, yeah. you know? When you drink, if you, you make have your one body life, unhealthy, you know? And there's so much, so many more ways that you can live your life. 
without using substances to help live it for you. Yeah, I like how they started out with like talking about the fads and they're like, hey, could this be the fad? And they're like, wait a minute, there is no fad. And it's just like mm -hmm. you're living. And it's like when, like when she said it's a new way to be human, you're being yourself. Exactly. And that's, that's be the best yourself. way to be human. Start like, the don't, trend of not yeah, drinking. Yeah, start your own kind of trends. Like a lot of people dress in their own ways and they got like looked at strangely for that and it's like sometimes when you go to a party and you're not drinking they're like oh she's a loser or like yeah or even like you're boring I'm like why aren't you drinking i'm like because yeah. i don't want to drink i want to enjoy myself when i'm sober i want to be able to remember this a couple days yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or even like if you're with a group of friends you know and you always used to drink and you guys drink every single time you're together mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you know you realize one day this isn't what i want to do yeah you yeah. know and you're afraid to tell them don't be afraid to tell them don't be afraid. Yeah, because <laughs> you know, if they're your friends, they're going to stick by your decision exactly, anyway. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, they're going to be friends like, with you either way. You got to also have to like ask the question, like, are you a follower or are you like a leader? Like, exactly. Like, when they were in the beginning of the video, they were like all walking in time and stuff. That's like following the whole trend of everyone else and following everyone else. But if you, if you don't do that and you follow yourself or follow Jesus because he yeah. really is the model for, you know, being a new the new human. Right, and he, cr yeah. he created us as individuals, so yeah. you should be proud to be who you are. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So on that note, when we consider our responsibility as Christians to walk in the path of Jesus, it is hard to fit in to the modern day party scene into the picture. But, but maybe, maybe, just yeah, maybe. Yeah, just maybe. You know, you can have your own parties with a few friends, a good time without, you know, the alcohol and the drugs. Yeah, try it. You never know, it might work. And our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, God's property. Now let's remember to treat our body and others with respect and dignity. We should be proud to be who we are. You know, many teens will tell you that they lost their virginity as a result of drinking at a party. And alcohol also makes one's desire for pleasure increase, and also the ability to make good choices decrease. You know, the temptation for sex is difficult enough to resist. Please make the decision not to drink at a party so that you can maintain your ability to make rational decisions. Now, what kind of party experiences or advice do you have? Let us know what you think and your advice by posting your thoughts on our website, realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. <laughs> and remember, if you go to a party, remember to have fun, enjoy yourself, but be safe. And don't put yourself into any life-threatening or compromising positions. So God bless you, and we'll see you next time on Real Faith TV. Peace. <laughs>
Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Menos de un minuto saber si está usted en riesgo de padecer prediabetes. Puede averiguarlo aquí. Pero probablemente no lo hará, ¿verdad? Tiene usted la agenda llena, los hijos, el trabajo, su show favorito que ya regresa. Por eso, hagámoslo ahora. Si es hombre, levante un dedo. Mujeres, ninguno. Agregue tres dedos si tiene más de 60 años. Más de 50, dos dedos. Más de 40, un dedo. Si lo duda, no olvide que está sentado en el sillón ahora mismo, así que levante otro dedo si no hace usted ninguna actividad física. Agregue un dedo por sí y ninguno si es no. Otro por sí y ninguno si es no. Elige la figura que más se parezca a la suya. Agregue la cantidad de dedos que aparecen aquí y yo prometo no mirar. Si levantó cinco o más dedos, probablemente tiene usted prediabetes. Lamento ser tan directo con usted, pero solo me dio usted un minuto de su tiempo. 